hey friends, it's Coop from Garage Gym Reviews, and today I'm reviewing the much anticipated, much awaited Rep Double Black Diamond Power Bar. This is Rep's top tier, flagship, top of the line power bar, where they're trying to go head to head with the Texas Power Bars of the world, the Rogue Ohio Power Bars of the world, and all the others. Is it as good as those? One of the most popular barbell types in the entire world is the power bar. The reason being, it's designed for the squat, deadlift, and bench. More often now, people are using some mixed use bars because they're adding in some power cleans and things like that. But I would say that for honestly most home gym owners, you're not doing a lot of dynamic movements. You're doing things like the slow movements, like squat, deadlift, bench. And so having a barbell that works for those is really ideal. So I love power bars for most home gym owners. And this one specifically is designed to have a lot of the attributes of very high-end bars, but come in at a more value-oriented price with some really like truly killer specs. And I don't want to bury the lead, but this knurling is freaking nice. Now, just for transparency's sake, Rep sent this bar so we could do a review. Also, if you'd like to purchase it, I'll put a link below the like button where you can do so. It's not gonna increase the cost that you pay, but if you wonder how does GGR make money, that's how, you guys supporting us through purchasing through those links. So if you'd like to do so, I'm grateful. And also it's not gonna increase how much you pay. Now in the same vein as the Rep Colorado bar, which we've reviewed and kind of compared directly to the Rogue Ohio bar, this one is in the same vein, a completely new build. Rep basically realized we have gone through and redone all of our power racks and really brought them up to a new standard. But the barbells I felt like for a long time were just eh, they were okay. So they came out with completely new barbell lineup and the power bar will be one of the most popular. This one specifically is the double black diamond power bar. That name may ring something in your mind. The reason being all their bars are kind of based on this idea that their HQ is in Colorado and it's like mountain culture. So the double black diamond, I'm pretty sure I don't ski very much, but is like a very hard route on a mountain. Man, I am so Midwestern. We don't, we are, we, it's flat. We got the Ozark Mountains, but it, it's a hills, okay? But for those of you that ski, this is basically like their top end bar and they do it with their name too. So this has all the fit and finishes you'd expect of a higher end bar. And we saw with the Rep Colorado bar. Things like etching on the inside of the collar sleeve with their logo, the name of the bar, also the weight of the bar, amazing end caps. Like I freaking love these end caps. I like this one especially, there's no colors. It's just black and silver, but it just feels very premium. Also very well done knurling and just everything about it. Now there's kind of an overview. Let's get into the specific specs. So first off, this is a power bar. So that means it has all the typical finishes of a power bar, which means it's got a 29 millimeter diameter. 29 millimeter, in my opinion, is ideal and most people agree. There are power bars out there like the Texas Power Bar that has a 28 and a half millimeter, but really for most people, 29 is the spec, it's the standard. This does have an IPF standard neural mark. Everything about it, like all power bars today, are based on the IPF spec. So basically that's the distance from the center for the neural mark. It does have a center neural. The center neural has the same knurling pattern as the outside, and it is using bronze bushings. It's using self-oiling bronze bushings. Personally, I prefer bronze bushings. More often we're seeing companies use composite bushings. Actually the Colorado bar, which is their mixed use bar of this version, does use composite bushings. They last a long time, but as for me in my garage gym, we use bronze bushings. Okay, this one in particular has a stainless steel finish or no finish, it's just stainless steel. So there's nothing in between your hand and the knurl. It's exactly as the knurling scientist at Rep designed it to be. And then these sleeves actually are stainless steel as well. If you're just looking at a sleeve, you're like, ah, it's no big deal, it's just an end sleeve. No, there are some specs on it that matter. So one, they're friction welding these sleeves. So there's no like bevel here. The plate will go all the way against the collar, which is nice. They look very clean. Also, they're using a smooth sleeve. 
Some of you, you like hear that and you're like, yes, I love smooth sleeves. Other of you, like you like a little ribbing on there. Personally, I like a rib sleeve. Other people like smooth sleeves, so that's just whatever you like. And they also have a nice bevel at the end here, which allows the plates to slide on pretty easily. This is the highest creme de la gym option. By the way, I would love if companies started using that. Like this is the creme de la gym option. This is definitely that option. This is the most expensive, which I say most expensive. It's still a cheaper bar amongst bars that are like it. Of all the double black diamond bars that they're selling, this one is the most bougie. Now I have used their other finishes and I'll just speak to them. One is they have the Cerakote on Duracoat. So they're using Cerakote over the shaft and then Duracoat on the sleeves. The Duracoat, it hardens the steel so it doesn't fade as quickly as Cerakote, but stainless steel would obviously be ideal. Also, I just like chrome too. Chrome's, because they're using a nice hard chrome plating on their stainless steel hard chrome option. So those would be my recommendations. But if you like the colors of the Cerakote and also want to pay less, like that one's going to be just fine. It's just my experience with Cerakote is over time, it does end up fading a little bit and just, it, although it protects against corrosion, it's not as good as stainless. Then they have the stainless and chrome option like I talked about. So the shaft is stainless steel and then they're using chrome on the sleeves. It's a little bit less than the stainless on stainless option, but it's not, honestly, if you're gonna get the stainless option, just go with the stainless sleeves because it's not that much more. I'll talk more briefly about my experience with Rep Stainless, specifically their Deep Neural Power Bar EX bar in the past, but I wanna talk about the knurling because really when you're looking at a power bar, the most important spec outside of maybe the tensile strength, which this one has a 200K tensile strength, which is in line with most power bars that are out there, is really gonna be the knurling. Come in. Okay, this knurling is a little bit unique in that they're not going with what is most popular right now, and that is the volcano knurl. This is actually a mountainous knurl. So you have three types of knurl most often. You have a hill, which is, as you'd assume, just a rounded top. You then have a mountain, which is a peak. And then you have a volcano, which is a peak, and then they chop the top off, and then it basically have all, has all these little peaks around it. For most people, volcano is really the ideal neural. It's the one that most people like. But one thing that Rep did is, although they're using a mountainous neural, which provides a really aggressive, like it's a really aggressive sharp bar, because they're using a higher TPI, which is teeth per inch, that's how many basically points you see per inch in the bar, because it's a very high number, they're very small peaks. So something like the Rogue Ohio Power Bar, the aggro version, the aggro bar that's like the most sharpest bar out there, they're using much fewer TPI, fewer teeth per inch, but it feels sharper because they're bigger points. They're long, so it digs in more. This, although it's a mountain neural, which a lot of people are like, I just like Volcano, because they're such small mountains, dude, it is, it is, it's aggressive, but it just feels very good. The bar I'd most compare it to is the Kabuki, they now call it the 250K power bar, but the new gen power bar, which honestly, that one and the Rogo Ohio power bar are two of my favorite bars of all time. They are tremendous. So, Reps had a lot of time to compare and look at all the bars and knurling that's out there and see what people like. This one is very similar in feeling to the Kabuki New Gen or 250K Power Bar, which is one of the best knurling patterns, in my opinion, on the market. So with that said, I love this knurl. I think it is tremendous. It's very aggressive. It's gonna stick. This isn't a bar I'd wanna do power cleans with. Like, you know, you could, but it's just sharp, you know? Like there's a bar where you're lifting, it's not so aggressive that's gonna rip your hands all the time, but you know it's there. The center neural is the same pattern. This is kind of preferential. Me, I like a more passive neural on the center because I do a lot of overhead press. So it, it's like hitting my front rack. I do front squats and I'll use power bars oftentimes for front squats. So having the same center neural as the outer neural, that's preference because if you're doing a lot of back squats, you want it to really dig in and stick, which this one will because it's the same on both sides as the center, but just something I wanted to call out. Now, one thing I wanted to mention on the stainless steel, and these reviews are honest, like you guys know that, so I'm just gonna give you my honest take. This is using stainless steel, and it's using stainless steel that Rep is using. So to compare it, for a company like Rogue Fitness, they're making their bars in the US, and they're able to track all the steel that's used. So when they say it's stainless steel, they know how much carbon is included in that stainless steel. Although it's not a published number, 
The stainless steel that I've used from say Rogue Fitness or from say American Barbell has been a higher, more corrosion resistant stainless steel than I've used from Rep in the past. So for an example, I have the Rep Deep Neural Power Bar EX, which is basically their old fully stainless power bar that came out and it was like, man, what a price and it's stainless. That thing rusted like any other bar. Like seriously, like it's better than bare steel, but dude, go on the internet, Google anywhere, and you'll see people that are saying that bar rusted and mine did too, we'll show it. But it's just rusted and it's like, this is a stainless steel bar. So I have that bad taste in my mouth. Did Rep fix that on this bar? I have no idea. Like we'll just have to find out in a year or so how rusty this is. But that is something that I worry about with rep stainless. Now they could have fixed that and this may be a higher grade of stainless steel, but I just wanted to say out loud, that's one of my worries with a stainless version from rep is that my previous version, the Power Bar EX Deep Neural, it's just rusty like any other bar. So wanted to call that out. I will say though, the Cerakote option, they're using actually Cerakote, the brand and actual Duracote. That one is going to last and do as well as any other Cerakote bar that's out there. Okay, now let's get into the value and kind of how it compares to other bars. So value wise, I think this is a freaking tremendous value bar. And that's really what Rep's looking for is they're trying to do the same thing they've done with their racks, their benches. They're offering like really innovative, really well done stuff. They're importing it so they can sell it for cheaper. And they're also going direct consumer so they can sell for cheaper. And now they're offering free shipping too. So they're baking that in. So like the price honestly on these bars is really good. So the Cerakote version, which is their cheapest version. So it's Cerakote with a Duracote finish on the sleeve. It's $330 with free shipping. The stainless with chrome sleeves, $400. The stainless with stainless sleeves is $450. All those have free shipping. So they're not like the cheapest bars that are out there. If you just want like the cheapest bar, we have other recommendations. And by the way, if you'd like to see a new roundup of the best power bar. Now that some new ones have come out, let me know in the comments and we can do it. But when I compare this to other options, it's pretty in line with other options. I think the one that it most compares to, the one that you should most consider is the Rogue Ohio Power Bar. Very similar on specs that they're offering. The difference is maybe a little bit in the warranty. This does have a lifetime warranty, by the way. But also this, where they're made, this one is made overseas. Rogue's is made in the USA. So if that matters to you, it may be worth obviously buying one that's made where you'd like it to be made. For other people, it doesn't really matter. But the price on there start at 295 plus $15 shipping and go all the way up to for their like, you know, big boy option with the stainless on stainless Ohio power bar, $500. And that includes shipping. So honestly, price wise, pretty similar. Generally, if you compare finish on finish, so Cerakote Ohio power bar to Cerakote double diamond bar, you're going to be looking at the double black diamond bar as a little bit cheaper. So it's gonna be about 330 for the rep bar where it's 370 for the Ohio Power Bar. Which one is better? Like just being honest, I do like made in the USA products. So I would lean towards and a proven bar like the Rogue Ohio Power Bar. But I will say, I think I actually prefer the knurling on this. <laughs> Which that's to say a lot because I absolutely love the Ohio Power Bar knurling. I will say they also have tighter tolerances on this bar sleeve than Rogue does. So in a similar vein where like the Colorado bar and the Ohio bar, personally, I'd probably still choose the Ohio power bar. I like the fact that it's made in the USA. You can get it for cheaper with the E-coat and also the black zinc options. You can go to stainless and it's more expensive, but I'm not worried about the stainless potentially rusting with them. Whereas this one, we just got to see how it plays out. But I will say, this is definitely a bar that goes toe to toe with the Ohio power bar, the American barbells of the world, and also the Texas power bar. Like, I think this is better than the Texas Power Bar. This is a very freaking good bar. So Rep, good job. I love the stainless options. I love all the finish options. If I'm gonna choose one, I mean, I'd probably still go with the Ohio Power Bar, but I think these are getting closer. And so I love, I love having the competition where it's pushing companies. Okay, what do you think? Which bar, which power bar out there would you get? Is this still enticing to you? I think the price point is on the money. The detail and everything that they're doing with the finishes is great and this knurling. I wish there was like a, some feature on YouTube where you could like feel the knurling. That'd be really cool. But this has been Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.